Hey guys, it's Eli Barati, and welcome back to part two of reading the amount of spin. So tip number four. This time it's all about the sound. You have to be flexible with this, depending on the conditions that you're playing at. If you're playing in a small local league hole, for example, a small room like this, potentially you'll be able to hear the difference in sound. If you're playing in a big tournament, it could be a bit harder. But if we're talking about another tip that can help you reading, reading the amount of spin is listening to, to the sound. So you've got a woody sound, which is like that. One more time, again. You can hear that kind of clonk. And if you're talking about when someone spins the ball, hopefully you'll be able to hear the difference. One more. So potentially you should be able to hear the difference. And I wanted to try and maybe even listen to it without me saying it. So now you try and listen and see if you can hear the difference. A tip for you here is to close your eyes and just try and listen only by listening without vision. <laughs> okay, close your eyes. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the difference and then that will help you with your game. If you can hear that sound where it's clunky, you'll know that there's not a lot of spin. If you hear that chick kind of sound, then you know that it's probably most likely got plenty of spin on the ball. Okay, so tip number five. This is about the flight of the ball. So if someone does a side spin ball, naturally it will curve one way, depending what side spin it, it, you put on the ball, or if you put side spin the other way, it will curve the other way. If you put float on the ball, meaning not a lot of spin, the ball will kind of hover. If you put a lot of backspin, the ball generally will skid through. So if you can start to be aware of the flight, you can start to um, know whether a ball has lots of spin or not a lot. So if the ball, for example, if I put lots of topspin on the ball, the ball will kick up. If I don't put so much topspin, the ball won't jump up so much because it doesn't have the same quality of spin. So try to just be more aware, especially in practice, as to how the ball is moving in the air, depending on what the person has done. And the more you learn how to read the flight, the more you'll be able to go, I can see the flight of the ball. I didn't see what they did, but I, I noticed the, the way the ball is moving or the way the ball is skidding. I know there's a lot of spin on that ball. So there's no really other way for me to help you with that. It's just down to you to use your experience to upscale um, that part of your game. Tip number six, uh, the hardest to see, but the more experience you have, the better you'll be able to, to work this one out. Contact on the ball. If I hit the ball there, straight through the ball, I'm not generating any spin. If I hit the ball here, this is for backspin by the way, if I hit the ball there, then I'm gonna generate a bit more backspin. Let's call it medium amount of backspin. And if I hit the ball straight underneath it, I'm gonna create lots of backspin. So let's have a quick look at the three contact points. I'll do it from the side so you, hopefully you can see it. Try and be aware of the contact point and the angle of the bat. <laughs> so notice the angle of the bat is quite open, closed, and I'm hitting through the ball and I'm contacting the ball there. The second one is a little bit more open. I generate a little bit more backspin, and then it's really open, which allows me to generate lots of backspin. One, two, three. Okay, so just to reiterate the contact point on the ball. If a player hits the ball in this zone here, so they're hitting there straight through the ball, they're not gonna be able to generate any spin really. That's more for flat hitting or serving flat. If they hit the ball in this zone, so they're contacting it there, that can be varied in terms of the amount of spin. A good high quality player can still produce lots of spin in this section, but they won't be able to generate as much spin, backspin we're talking about by the way here, when they're contacting straight under the ball. So over here, they can still create uh, a certain amount of 
quality backspin, but over here they'll create a lot more backspin. So it depends on the player that you're playing. The high quality player, the more deception and variety of, and quality of spins that they can, they can produce. And that's where I get lots of my players, or I see lots of people going, oh, I'm playing so rubbish today. And in fact, sometimes when you play certain players, not always, but when you play certain players, they have the ability to vary the amount of spin uh, with uh, finesse and, and deception and such high quality, which then inf makes you play at a lower level or feel like you're playing weak and you're making lots of unforced errors, where in fact you're being forced to make unforced errors by their class, if you want to call it that. So sometimes give your player respect if they are able to generate uh, lots of different variations of spin. So that's why I also made this video because I wanted to help you to read the amount of spin and hopefully with the six tips that I've given you, you will upscale your knowledge of spin and the amount of spin and then you can start to uh, make less than forced errors, especially when you're playing at a higher level and a player's producing different amount of spins. You can identify the amount of spin and what spin and then you can go, right, I know what to do with this because I've identified exactly what's on the ball. So as promised, the bonus tip. Try and have a little look here and then I'll give you the bonus tip. Okay, so you've seen a variety of serves there. Now, I didn't show you the other side for a reason. The bonus tip is all about the eyes. The big mistake what a lot of players do is they start to track the ball as soon as it kind of bounces here and then bounces there. And, and then once it reaches in and around the net area, they kind of think, oh, I think it's backspin, I think it's heavy backspin, or I think it's side spin. And then they adjust and they make the... Um, the stroke that they feel is required to return the serve. But in fact, the, the highest level players, what they do is they pinpoint before, way before uh, the ball has reached the net. And that's why, even though they have extraordinary serves, if you play some top players, like myself, of course, you will notice the quality of the serves are amazing. But why do the top players hardly ever miss these quality serves? Is because the eyes, they are tracking the ball as the person serves and they uh, literally they keep their eyes up until point of contact they watch very carefully and they see the point of contact so if someone served to me I'd be doing this with my eyes I'd be tracking it okay I see they've contacted the ball underneath right I know it's backspin then I would do, use the other elements which I've used the other six elements to try and help me know the amount and the quality of the spin. So using your eyes is probably the most important tip that I will give you. And how to kind of use your eyes, a nice little tip that I use with my players, I just literally make them do this. I don't allow them to look on this side, so some players I actually make them go like that, so they're literally like you are with the video right now, you're only seeing this side, you're not looking at the other side, so you get someone to serve at you, and you keep your bat there and your eyes are aligned with where they're serving from and you just keep track up until point of contact. I hope that helped you and as always, thanks for following me. Thanks for uh, supporting me and on the journey and uh, let's keep growing and I hope you enjoyed the videos and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.